Blues and Gragras, please welcome to the stage, Water! Please, please, you flatter me. You flatter me. We're getting, no, don't sit down, don't sit down. Stand up. It's meaningless if you bail that quickly. This is, oh, come on. We, we're getting a late start on the show. This is rude to the act after us. I mean it, I mean it. Uh, we had our fun, it's a fun bit, but everyone needs to sit down now. No, wait, don't no, fight me on it a little bit. Come on, fight me on it, come on. Now it's uncomfortable because it's kind of a half and half. <laughs> People can't decide if it's actually <laughs> irresponsible to keep agreeing to my bit. Hello, I am Watto. <laughs> it's great to be here in San Diego. <laughs> it was a test. That's what I'm here to do. I'm the warm-up comic on the show. So sometimes I have to say the wrong thing to see that your reactions are in check. Test the reflexes. I got to say I was a little bit uh, worried about coming to this festival and coming to this city. I heard that uh, San Francisco is a little sketchy this time of year. Now, this is why it's important to test your reflexes. <laughs> because I feel like 40% of you were a little off on the response to that. <laughs> it should be rolling waves of laughter all the way back. They should hear your laughter at how did this get made and go, I made a mistake. <laughs> Those scabs, not even part of the festival. This is a new thing Watto started doing last year. This thing, it's kind of like a stand-up thing. You know what I'm saying, like this? Getting really into crowd work, want to blow up on TikTok. <laughs> what do you do for a living? <laughs> Imagine I said something mean, but not too mean. <laughs> now this is the lesson. The woman did not even respond to my prompt. <laughs> and I would argue, in most of the crowd work videos you've seen, what the person in the audience says is irrelevant. <laughs> Almost like the fact that they are saying this off the cuff is merely an illusion. <laughs> okay, this is the George Lucas talk show. I have to get down the brass tacks. We're starting late because all of you gave me a very indulgent standing ovation. <laughs> Who here has ever been to the taping of a TV show before? Okay. Okay, so you get it. You're second tier knowledge audience members. Now let's look for the extremes. Who here has ever witnessed the George Lucas talk show in any form before tonight? <laughs> Great, I love that. And now here's the most important thing. Can we bring the crowd lights up a little bit? Can we get the house lights up a little bit? Just a little bit, great. I want you to raise your hand if you truly have no idea what you're about to see tonight. Right here, this guy, please tell me what, and there's no wrong answer, this is a safe space. <laughs> you saw what I did with the crowd work, nothing mean. <laughs> safe space, what do you think this is going to be? <laughs> yes, correct. We joke, of course, we joke. It's going to be an incredibly normal talk show with a razor thin premise. The premise, of course, being George Lucas is hosting a talk show. <laughs> the real George Lucas, which is why this is happening in a theater that's only 95% sold out. <laughs> I swear to God, he's the real guy. Billionaire, artist, businessman, genius, tech disruptor, boom. A charmed life, a beautiful life, but if I can bring the mood down in the crowd for just a moment, 
a man who has also experienced his fair share of tragedy. Oh. The unimaginable. He lost a child. I know. Star Wars and all of the connected intellectual property <laughs> were stolen by the Walt Disney Company. Boo, hiss, go woke, go broke. We all agree that's the problem, right? <laughs> One night, crash, boom, lightning strike. Click, 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 bam. George, what's going on here? Goes into nursery, cradle turned over. <laughs> Letter written in blood. Dear George, here are the six billion dollars we agreed to. Signed, Bob Iger. Tragedy! <laughs> but my man turns lemons into lemonade. He used the opportunity to flex a part of himself that he had never gotten to express as an artist before. His boundless charisma and his ability to connect to any human being <laughs> through deep, intimate, meaningful conversation. <laughs> so that's what you're about to see tonight. I think I've tested you all properly. Your responses seem to be in check. Thank you very much. Let's start the fucking show. Welcome retired filmmaker, George Lucas. That's my guy right there. That's my guy. He is already running further and faster than he told me backstage he intended to run. He specifically said he was not going to do this for loop that he thought it was a bad idea. But my man lives through the danger, and he's turning around, and he's turning around, and he's doing it. He's going backwards. He's doing the full fury road. They're turning the trucks around. They're going back to where they started. My man is unstoppable. George motherfucking Lucas. Look at him. He will not be winded. He will be, he's doing another a curly cue. Okay, now he's back on track. He's high-fiving more people. Here he goes. Peak physical condition. He's going to be ready to talk in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. That's my fucking guy right there. That's my fucking guy. How you doing, George? Hello, Wado. Welcome to Sketchfest. Thank you. I got to admit, George. You know, uh, we should just get this out of the way. This is the 10th anniversary of the George Lucas talk show. This year, 2024, right. <coughs> this is the first show in our 10th anniversary. This is uh, a big year. 
because we are celebrating three this is true. major milestones this year. GLTS 10. Ten. We started this run of test shows in February of 2014. And here we are 10 years later, unbeatable track record of test shows yet to be picked up. Yes. <laughs> uh, but this is also the year that I turn 80. GL80. 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 And Watto turns 25. Hey. Watto can finally rent a car. Or That's is that right. 26? I don't know. Fuck. Uh, I prefer to fly anyway. Yeah, George. I don't, I don't rent cars. I buy cars. George, at this point, this is kind of old hat for us, right? We've been yeah. doing this show for 10 years. That's right. I don't know about you. I feel like you're usually cool as a cucumber backstage pre-show. No jitters. No jitters. I have to admit, I'm a little nervous for this show. Why this one? I heard that SF is a little sketchy this time of year. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a great joke. That's a play on the sketch show. Thank you. I actually, George, you you're never going to. You can't do that. That joke doesn't play in other towns. No, and you're never going to believe this. Yeah. I swear to God, I told that same joke before you came out. No, I heard. And the audience, oh, you did. Fuck, God yeah. damn it. There is no detail of this show that escapes my attention. I mean, that's why you're the king. <laughs> yeah, but I I if anything, I, I think you got a bigger pop a second time. Possibly. Here's the, th here's the thing I'm thinking about just hitting me. GL80. Yeah. Glady. Glady. 80 for Glady. 80 for Glady. <laughs> and here's another thing, an initiative I think we should hold on to for 2024. Yeah. George, you, of course, are a father. Yes. People have called you daddy. That's right. Perhaps daddy. Yeah. But can we start tonight calling you gladdy? Yeah. I, I, I would be gladdy if people did that. Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, the one person who doesn't have a milestone this year is probably someone should bring out on the stage. Our, <laughs> our, our producer, because the show has a milestone. I have a milestone. You have a milestone. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a man who needs no introduction. It's my 32nd birthday this year, 32. Watto, a couple things. You asked me to bring out all this beer. Thank you. I did, but also uh, we what realized we were down one mic. Yeah. And this mic does not go all the On way. On the ground, boy. <laughs> Maybe for the whole show. Maybe for the whole show, but certainly until the microphone situation is settled. We have found, you know, we've, er, you know, Patrick was not an onstage persona no. in the show prior to the pandemic. That's one of the many things we lost. Uh, <laughs> we, we as a culture, unfortunately, lost Patrick's anonymity. <laughs> yes. Collectively. And, and in our live shows, in the live stream, it's fine. He's just in his little video box. It's but fine. On, but, but the- We, we the, got them right where we want him, here. From one venue to the next, sometimes he's been too high, sometimes he's been too low, yeah. and here we are, baby bear, just right. In the middle. <laughs> uh, I, I want to bring our guests out uh, as quickly as you can, because we got the great lineup. Yes. And let's say, I mean, uh, to be announced in the Crawley, we had two last mechan minute switch outs, because this is the nature of showbiz, yeah. but God, the replacements we got are so good. Woo! A lineup so good, you can't believe it wasn't intended this way from the beginning. Yes. True. But I want to call out quickly, uh, got Blake Hanrath from Alpha City Brewing Co., mm -hmm. local brewery, brought the mystery, but this is a four pack of four, I don't want to say reject flavors, but let's say, <laughs> They still had them, and they had only one of each left. Yeah. And then to really play Russian roulette, he also provided me with four unmarked cans <laughs> that I have been assured are not poison. <laughs> and I am going to drink these during the show and see if I, I can identify what they are in honor of our four great guests. You the four it. mystery cans yeah, of the yeah, show. Yeah. Googles and Gargas, please welcome to the stage Adam Savage, Leon Cridge, Travis McElroy, and Jess McKenna! Hello, 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 hello. Oh. Hello. Okay, great. Hello. Oh, thank you so much. Hi, hi. Hello. Stuck here. I can't move. I'm stuck here. The mic doesn't go any further. You go right there. I'm going to go right here. Yeah. Uh, guests, please sit wherever you want. George Lucas talks so is a flat hierarchy aside from Patrick, who sits where he belongs. 
and, and Patrick, we have been assured that as soon as the microphone situation is settled, yeah. maybe we'll adjust. And we'll see how long it takes. I'm kind of getting used to having this chair for myself, though. Yeah, so like I get it. it, yeah. it, it, it oh, is, no. It is nice. And oh, no. I would say another innovation of the forum, there is no talk show that just leaves an extra <laughs> chair just yeah. so the guests That's feel true. like someone else they can well, stretch nice out. Well, it's for Elijah. Can, yeah. It's for Elijah. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's like, you go here. CGI, You're the guest now. CGI and someone later. Patrick, I just, it, no, look, if we're able to fix the mic cord problem, yeah. obviously, yeah. you can sit in that chair, unless our guests decide to start using it to put their coats on <laughs> before then. In which case, it would be rude to kick the coat. You're off. right. No, you're right. Look, it's not that bad. <laughs> it does. This right now seems like a weird style of intervention that we're doing <laughs> for Patrick. I think the worst part is I'm not facing you. Yeah. I feel yes. like if I was facing you, it would be a little who's, bit. Who's well. talking? Oh yeah. God. Well, here, here's what I Are think. Are we the voices in his head? Is, <laughs> is this happening? is this the Inside Out sequel? <laughs> The live reading of Herman's head. Yeah. <laughs> to me, to me, there, there's something about the the mise en scene of this that yeah. reminds me it's very salacious crumb. Sure. Yeah. For you to be sitting there on the edge. So you just want me to laugh a lot during the show? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. I'm I'm yeah. ready. Start the show. Show start the motherfucker. What are you talking about? Patrick, in the history of producing, let's start the show a full 15 <laughs> minutes in. <laughs> is perhaps one of the most visibly bad moves you can make. Uh -huh. if, if Patrick were running Saturday Night Live, his famous saying would be, the show doesn't go on <laughs> because it's ready. The show goes on at 11.53 <laughs> because I forgot it was supposed to start at 11.30. Uh, well, what a, what, a, what a stellar assortment of guests. Some, some people that I know well, some people that are new friends. Jess, I don't believe we have ever... No, we've never met, George. Nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you, Jess. Nice to meet you. Uh, but, uh, but Adam, we've, worked, we've met together because you, you worked for me. I did. I did. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> yeah. we, we, had, we had two meetings. That's right. Two good ones. I don't, I don't take a second meeting unless the first one is good. Uh... Yes, and, I, and this, in a way, completes the trilogy. <laughs> this is here's the third meeting. Until. Here's the, thi the thing that I loved about that first meeting is it was uh, the morning. At, remember when Walking with Dinosaurs came out? Like of course. That was a big deal, the, the CG dinosaurs. Uh, and it was the morning after that show had aired. And I was doing some art department stuff for episode two. And George comes in, and the first 40 minutes of the meeting that we all had you were looking at tapes of Walking with Dinosaurs, and yeah. you had clips that you had uh, time-stamped. Yeah. And you were like, hire this animator, hire this hire animator, hire, hire, hire whoever them. did this Galley Mimas, hire that guy. Yeah. Hire that T-Rex. <laughs> exactly. Get me that Brontosaurus in here. Yeah. George, do you remember what was especially good about the Galley Mimas? The Galley Mimas? Yeah. Looked real. <laughs> Also, it's nice to get a female dinosaur. I feel like a lot of the dinosaur movies, Gallimimus is a woman, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, George. As opposed to a Gylimimus. Yeah, the like Gylimimus is more <laughs> macho. George, in Jurassic Park, they're famously all female. Yeah. And that's great. I support it. <laughs> it's not like I told Steve, cut all the women dinosaurs out like I did with the uh, X-Wing fighters in Return of the Jedi. It's that's real. a real thing. You can look it up. It's a real thing. Uh, Adam, uh, nice to see you. Been a while since we worked together on Ep 2. Clones, I call it. Clones. Do you remember uh, who had the idea? Were you there in the historic meeting where someone pitched to give Watto a little hat? Because <laughs> I felt like in all the sort of technical innovations of Ep 2, oh, you're going to digital for the first time, shooting on video, changing the post pipeline, all of that. The hat is really the thing people tend to focus on. I know I was not there. God. Yeah, we did not loop you in for the hat. So meeting. that was a high level, not to, I mean, big time you, but that must have been a sort of above your pay grade. Oh, yeah, thing. no, no, like George is a president and I'm a mail carrier. That's sure. what my job Oh, is. no, no, although the mail is very important, <laughs> as is the female. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so after, do you recall, after I got done showing you the clips, how long was that first meeting? 
Uh, about an hour, hour yeah. and a half. So the feature length meeting. <laughs> Wait, sorry, it was an hour long meeting and the first 40 minutes was him showing clips? It was, uh, so he was, he had <sighs> 40 and then an hour. Yeah, he was up in the art dinos department dinos and to then cover art department shit. Yeah. Right, so he and Rick McCallum were looking at who he wanted to hire from Walking with Dinosaurs team and then we talked about the arena. Uh, Mark Siegel and I built the first model of the arena for you. Yeah, oh, it's a great scene, right? Yep. Yeah. You like that scene? Yep. That's with all the lightsabers yeah. when they fight. <laughs> that Is sounds that vague, a but yes, you're right. Yes. <laughs> yes, but even if you were guessing, that would have been a, a safe area. <laughs> Lee, very nice to see you again. It's good to see you, George, yeah. as always. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Yeah, I think I saw you at the uh, Oscar show. Yeah, last year. So. Yeah, the live stream show. When yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, prior to that, uh, when would we? Uh, I'm trying to. What I, don't know, I would bump into you at the ranch now and then. But yeah. You know, I remember fondly, of course, when you were at my 16th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. You remember that, yes? Sweet 16. <laughs> what is the 16th anniversary? Do you recall? That's. I think it's the. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's the peridot. Peridot. The, the peridot. Yeah. That's the, the that's the, the, that's the traditional. Is. I don't know yeah. what the modern one is. But you remember where we were, of course, because it was an amazing place to have a 16th wedding anniversary in Venice, Italy. Yeah. Very wet. Water everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You're with your lovely wife, Melody. That's right. She's the best. <laughs> is she here tonight? What? Is she here tonight? She doesn't come to this show. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Has Just she ever? No. I just figured well, it was so close. Yeah. Yeah. She gets it. She's I watched the live stream. Sure. She knows what it is. I get it. <laughs> it's probably my wife uh, does not enjoy listening to my shows either because, qu to quote her, um, I have to hear you talk the rest of the day. Right. So, <laughs> I yeah. Just I want what to call out one person towards the front of the audience here started clapping when you said my show like they wanted to support their love of your show. <laughs> but then as you continued the sentence, they realized it sounded like they were applauding your <laughs> wife not listening <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just <laughs> failed fast. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, part of the problem is like sometimes the title of your show feels like it's unwelcoming to her perhaps. You know, when you go ahead and list so many people in the title, <laughs> my brother, my brother, and me, I don't hear your wife in that title. Well, she's not on the show. That would be weird if it was like, and my wife, <laughs> parentheses, listening, and me. <laughs> I think that's a great title. Fair. I, it should be the subtitle. Just put a colon. You j if your title isn't, if you feel like the title's too long, put a colon in the title. <laughs> you add more title. Yeah. Then you get to another part. You add more. Add a colon. Add more title. Would you have a colon to the George Lucas talk show? Mm -hmm. Have you considered a colon? We've never needed one. I didn't think we'd be talking about George Lucas's colon tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, at eighty, you need to you be. Need to you got to be checking you that. Gotta you got to keep up with that. Yeah. Mine's good. Did you direct your colonoscopy yourself? I was just going to ask that. I did second <laughs> unit on my colonoscopy. <laughs> Watto, have you had a colonoscopy? I'm 25 years young, oh, yeah. baby. Do you have a colon? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, colon. No. no. No colon. No colon. Not no colon. even part of one? No. no. I mean, there's. I, mean, I got a couple. Uh, <laughs> yes. It would be a point. Can, can Jess and I just do a show for a minute? <laughs> Where we talk about punctuation. <laughs> Given the nature of the films that we created Watto for, yes. to add any kind of colon would just add minutes to the render. Yeah. <laughs> because we're never going to show it. We're never going to show it. These right. are family films. That's what, that's There's what never a reason. said to me. What? I remember when we were rehearsing, you said, I just want you to understand it's, it's a business calculation. It would add too much to the budget to give you either a colon or nuance. So we didn't render either. And I got Wait, it. And, and I this, got it. And this, you'll appreciate this, Adam, because you were not on the meeting. In the negotiations for two, we said, we'll give you a little hat. Yes. <laughs> and I went, done. No colon, no nuance, but yeah. you can have a I, little hat. I want to say I've got a complaint similar to Watto's. What's that? Well, like, I worked on episode one for, uh, I Phantom think, Manish. 11 Phantom. weeks. Yeah. Uh, I built some spaceships. And as you were finishing the movie... You kept on increasing the amount of time you had to have worked on the film to get a credit. Oh. And two weeks before the release, the cutoff reached me. Oh. Yeah. And so I don't have a credit on episode one. I'm a little salty. Are about you it. are you on IMDB? 
Did you put yourself in? It's a genuine question. Was, Are you that on was a wish fulfillment pornography? <laughs> <laughs> Are you on the Phantom Menace IMDb? I, I'm not sure. Okay, I'll I figure it out. Checked. I have something to do during the show. Adam S. Trivia. Patrick, Adam S. I trivia. will, I will, I will. Give me a second. Uh, Patrick likes adding things to IMDb that are neither movies nor TV shows. <laughs> Patrick will sometimes add conversations <laughs> he's had <laughs> as projects on IMDb. And my favorite part is this phone action is happening downstage center. Yeah. <laughs> right where it belongs. Sort of the power position of the stage. Yeah, you Patrick, know? that's what Patrick, I was going for. Patrick, it's yeah. actually kind of rude because the light from your phone is drawing attention from <laughs> the people on stage. So maybe you can turn the other way while you add the IMDb yeah, credits. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, thank you. I like this because I get to photograph the moment people this learn about me. <laughs> Adam, the thing you need to understand, I mean, I was an executive producer on my pal uh, Larry Kazdan's Body Heat, and I took my name off of that movie <laughs> because it's so sexy that I thought, this is true, it, that movie's so sexy that I said, it can't be produced by me or people won't realize how sexy it is. <laughs> you can look it up. This is another thing you can look up. Uh, and so, I mean, if you want to take that as a compliment, you know, I'm too sexy for You're your You're too credits. sexy for yeah. Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> it might be that. Phantom, well, not the sexy movie. And notice, you did get the credit on Clones, right? Which well, is much sexier. That's a very sexy, I did. sexy movie. movie. Yes, I did. Very you sexy. Did. They, they eat food and it flies around in the air. What is... That's hot. Well, that's hang on. Hang on, guys. Adam, I'm psyched to stare at you in the eyes when I tell you, visual effects model maker, parentheses, uncredited. <laughs> Uh, Patrick, awesome. yeah. Yeah. Patrick, yes. I, I think going forward you should uh, remain facing uh, towards the audience. Sure. Oh, towards because, the audience. Well, yeah. I just think it made people a little uncomfortable I get when it. you made direct eye contact with Adam without <laughs> asking for permission. Yeah, I get it. I and get I, it. Th the comfort of our guests is a top priority here. I'm also, if I may, yeah. a little worried that you're blocking Lee in the eyeliner for the people sure. in the front row. If you could lay down. That would be great, actually. <laughs> this feels like a smart song. Yeah. Now he, now he can't accidentally make eye contact with anyone. <laughs> Except God. That's true. <laughs> and that's who you really should be checking in with yeah. more often. Yeah. Now, uh, we've entered into an area that I think could be very relatable uh, on a human level. Uh, uh, you've expressed your dissatisfaction. You worked for 11 weeks on Phantom Menace, and, and, uh, and you got no official credit in the print of the film. Though digitally, you've been credited now as an uncredited helper on the film. Thank you for your help. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the check's cleared, right? Yes, they did. Well, <laughs> all right. Are there things that you feel like you have not gotten credit for that you'd like to now use this as an opportunity <laughs> to tell question. the world, I did this, and, uh, and, the, and you might not know it? This is the kind of question you only get from someone who's been hosting a talk show for 10 yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> That's wise. I don't, I don't think I get enough credit for most of the jokes I make. Mm. Is there a particular one that stings? Um... <laughs> They're not good. I'm not going to repeat them. I'll repeat it. Okay. Say but one. Well, just, just say one. Just describe them. Yeah. Don't give well, away okay. what's funny about the joke, but <laughs> title them and give us a synopsis. Right. And, and well, Travis like backstage, I was yeah. I was talking to Wado, and I said, like, oh, I'm kind of nervous to do this show here because this time of year it can get a little sketchy here. <laughs> okay. I want to make one thing clear. I know he has the right to be angry with me. But I'm angry at all of you for laughing harder <laughs> that time. <laughs> I'm genuinely. It's the deliver. It's the deliver. It fucking was. And it was also layered. Mm hmm. Because there's a history and you're building on that comedically. Yeah, it has a backstory. Yeah. It was kind of an F3. It was sort of a Sith situation where you get the yeah. big emotional payoff. Mm -hmm. Wait, Wait a second. Who's Lee? Laird? What? <laughs> who's Laird? Larry? Ca no, Laird. I thought you said it's all it's Laird. 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 Oh, Laird. I'm sorry. That's well, Leia's full know. name. Is uh, there? Leia's a nickname <laughs> for Laird. Is there anyone named Laird here? Hamilton, the big wave surfer? <laughs> Laird Hamilton, the big wave? No. Is no, Laird, Laird Hamilton, Hamilton here? Is he big or the waves big? Waves. Okay. <laughs> Lee. Is he little or he's is actually, he normal he's size? He's pretty petite. Really? Yeah, he's petite. Lee? Yes. Why yeah, I'm wondering why I'm here right now. Well, hang on. Oh, I have a Lee, I have a question. Why was George with you on your anniversary? 
Well, G George, you remember why. Yeah, tell us why. Because your marriage is a very important event in your life. Yes. So there you, are these things called friends. Okay. And Great. they like to be with you to yeah. celebrate important moments yeah. in your life. Oh, man, I got to figure we that out. We were in Venice at the Venice Film Festival. As you'll I, recall, yeah. a bunch of us directors at Pixar were honored with the Golden Lion for Lifetime Achievement, which you gave us, yeah. which was very lovely. Yeah. And Pixar was a company that started off as I, under, crea under, I created under it. Under your yeah. In a wing. closet on Kerner Boulevard. Yes, so you came and gave us the awards, and then we had a celebratory dinner, and it just happened to be my 16th wedding anniversary. Yeah. And they had arranged for a lovely cake. And uh, so I, I had the, the, the <laughs> weird experience yeah. of being in Venice, Italy, celebrating my anniversary with my closest friends and you, George. Yes. <laughs> the uncredited executive producer of Body Heat. <laughs> Lee, Lee, you got hired at Pixar uh, during the development of production of the first Toy Story. Yes. Right? So yes. you never overlapped with George in the company. No, not in the company. Do you remember, like, was there any sort of sentiment of certain people being like, oh, you aren't here for the George era? Like, was there any sense of the history of when George was owning? Did people tell Did stories about me, like about the old days? Well, I mean, the only thing that I really remember is that you it was kind of a weird situation when you needed to get rid of Pixar. Yeah. Right? It wasn't even called Pixar then, right? It was it was just a division of, of Lucasfilm. Yeah. But um, they called I, the I, computer Pixar. I seem to remember right? you were going through kind of a messy divorce at the mm -hmm. time. And I think oh. that uh, I'm sorry to bring that up if that's touchy. Yeah. But um, you needed to sell off some parts of the company. Right. Yeah. And, and Pixar is called Pixar and exists in the world because of that. Right, and I'd had, uh, I'd had a run of movies that were uh, slow to become very popular. <laughs> uh, a lot of slow burn hits uh, in that era. It was, not, it was not the peak of my box office success, certainly. And, uh, but a, a yet another thing that I created that ends up becoming uh, enormously successful uh, after I do it. And I know you really like enjoying that you were part of creating Absolutely, Pixar. because it's sort of uh, it's sort of like when you abandon something and then it, it prospers. Uh, yeah. When you like sell something off, uh, you know, why don't you understand this? Like when you uh, had Anakin. Yeah. I mean, there's, I, you I had, think, I just think a little kid, he, yes. you know, he was good with tools and stuff, I, but I'm then. Going, I'm going to word this very specifically. <laughs> yeah. I think it is inarguable that Anakin Skywalker did some of his most impactful work after our relationship <laughs> ended. <laughs> and that is exactly how I would phrase it. So I relate 100%. If we're just talking sheer impact, very yeah. little happened under my eye. A race here or there, a couple jo droids fixed it. George, I, I'm curious now, when they uh, stole uh, the, the Star Wars franchise from you, you yeah. by giving you a lot of money, distracting you with a lot of money so they could steal it. Yeah. Did you think about trying to buy back Pixar just to like as payback to them? Like, okay, well then I'm buying Pixar with the money you just gave me. <laughs> I mean, I have, I still have a few tricks up my sleeve. You're still I don't thinking wanna, about I don't want to give anything away, but I play a very long game and I think the next few years are going to be very interesting. <laughs> oh um, no. Uh, I'm not saying I'm gonna do anything. I'm not saying anything's in the works, but don't never count me out, never underestimate me. Um, in that particular instance, there was a tax change that was coming up and I needed to sell Star Wars fast. Um, or, I was, or it was gonna cost me, you know, and, and, and so, you know, I had to act quickly. You know, tax time's approaching. Some of you may need to sell off your companies. Yeah, many of you may need to sell off whatever the equivalent of Star Wars is in your life. And that's something like, we can all take a second and reflect upon. What's your Star Wars? <laughs> look in yeah. your heart. What's Wait, again, yours? though, if we look at George's uh, net worth and his income, yeah. a Star Wars to us is probably <laughs> like an Ikea couch. <laughs> <laughs> I am selling an Ikea couch if anyone needs it. It's pretty good. 
<laughs> I would say youth condition good. I, I would say also uh, after the fiscal year, they just had Disney's looking to buy used furniture. <laughs> Cow! Pow! 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 Go woke! Go broke! <laughs> no, no, absolutely Wild. not. It's not my sentiment. It's not my sentiment. Jess, do you have anything that you feel you haven't gotten credit for? The only thing I can think of is really dark. Um, so prepare yourselves. Uh, um, how to how to put this? <laughs> I I ran into traffic and pulled my nephew from getting hit by a car, and we can't talk about it because it's too much of a bummer. Whoa. But I'd like credit for the fact that I was a hero. Yeah. Wait. Stand Woo! up. Yeah. Stand okay. up. Yeah. Standing O. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh gosh, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. And I think it's important to know that women can be heroes too. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> and also, I love I love that story because I'm a huge car enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I always I love cars. I love fast cars. You know, uh, I think part of the reason why I feel okay even saying that is the car wasn't coming that fast, but he was very small. He was two. And mm -hmm. I ran into traffic and grabbed him before the car hit him. And I did, you don't have to stand again, but I did a slight turn. <laughs> I think that half stand. You half can. stand. <laughs> you don't have to stand, but I did do a slight turn. And so, you know, I was prepared physically without thinking to take the car, you know, right. like, but, I, but both of us cleared in time. That's right. But, but the, the thing that really bothers me is that I understand why we can't tell the story because it was very scary. And it's not fun to relive the day, the moment, the feeling. But my, my sister-in-law tells a story about how with one of the other, ki like his older sister, when she was a baby, I uh, was like playing catch with her, you know, classic yeah. baby move. And I hit her head on a door frame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to request that maybe we just don't tell that story anymore <laughs> since I saved the other one. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, I'm looking for like a net neutral, I'm yes. a good aunt. Yeah. Yes, we, yeah. we in, in your family, you are the one who has brought balance. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, George. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, do you recall the, the make or model of the car that... <laughs> yeah. You Great know, question. Uh, was that's like a 10-year-old like question. Was it like a question. classic, yeah. like an old classic you know, car? It like was like a black town car. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was because the street was semi-closed down for Bunker Hill Day, it's in Boston, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of, there were a lot of like um, block parties, and so a lot of the parents assumed the street was closed, and this like black town car came down the street. It really shouldn't have. Yeah. And, and Des ran into the street, and I, I grabbed him. Yeah, and it was Whitey Bulger in the car. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, they got him. <laughs> uh, uh, Jess, may I ask how long ago this was? Uh, or how recently? Ni nine years ago. Nine years ago. Oh. And you feel like you've basically been going a decade without full credit. The way you presented this, I was like, assuming this happened a week ago, <laughs> and you feel like people haven't caught up to you. I this is actually a crime. <laughs> if it's been almost a decade. I mean, people were pretty like, good job on the day. That's <laughs> yeah, enough. I should fucking hope so. <laughs> That's not <laughs> I enough. should hope their response wasn't like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for my still three-dimensional son. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you saved the kid? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> like I have a few notes on the manner up. and the method of the way that you saved that child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the child is now 11. Yes. Does the child know that you're responsible for... No, and I'm kind of like, at one point, I feel like maybe when he's 21, I can be like, Des, do you know that I saved your life one time? Like, love me forever. I mean, he already does, but... Um, but, like, last year, I flew to Boston to watch him star in Newsies. Whoa! Uh, and I kind of wanted to be like, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> you should have taken a fucking now, bow at the end of that show. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saying you're welcome to the audience? Yes, of like he was without excellent. me. Yeah, there you go. He now, was a very convincing Jack Kelly at ten. And how's the one whose head you bludgeoned into <laughs> the door frame? How are they doing? She's great. She's, She's great. great. Wait. She's uh, flourishing. You're saying that he doesn't know that you did this? No, nobody talks about this. Pat oh. He's Patrick, Patrick wait, hold this child hey, right now. Just, just, can you just send him the link to this video when it goes live on YouTube? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay, uh, audience, are we more impressed that Jess actually damaged the head of one <laughs> nephew or saved the life of the other? 
Same. 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 Thank you. I think the answer is clear. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay, but now that Adam is done recording, that answer was not clear. You folks <laughs> did not. <laughs> Get your <laughs> shit together. Jack I, very I clearly said save. That was the word to repeat. Some people just applauded. Right. Also, I did like how many of you took a moment, thought about it, and like, well, let me, give me a moment. I don't want to be mean to the other kid. Like, it's not their Should fault. we do one where they say bludgeoned? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, also, you have an actual director on the stage. <laughs> I, I, if, if we're going to have some input on this. We we have, wait, we have got two. two we have two, page. George. Yeah. I thought you were talking about me. Sorry. <laughs> yes. uh, I mostly do second unit. I, I, I'd rather I'd rather executive produce. Uh, I don't want to direct this, but I will say if we're gonna do a second take, it was a niece with a damaged head, yes. right? Yes. Yes. And a nephew. And a nephew saved from traffic. Yeah. And right, we're saying, Lee, do you have saved. anything for the framing or for the for how the shot should look? Uh, a slightly higher angle. Okay, great. Like there? Okay. I, could also, I could do some punch up if you um, need. Maybe, audience, maybe work a joke in there. Audience, are you impressed that Jess damaged the head of her niece <laughs> throwing her up into a door frame? Are you impressed? Oh, we're impressed. Uh, okay. we love all of uh, let me ask you how impressed you are that she saved her nephew's life. Yeah! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. Thank you so much. Okay, I, okay, one Check note. Check the gate. <laughs> I don't know. I when you know. say impressed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, all, you all, first of all, unless the door frame was really <laughs> far away and it was a hell of a shot, yeah. <laughs> that shot was one in a million. <laughs> unless that happened. Also, audience, why'd you clap? <laughs> I, I, do, clap. I do feel like the audience was, was caught off guard by the question. <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> Genuinely did not understand the assignment, uh, and, and justifiably oh. so. No, I think that makes it even better. When I think you show this to the family, they'll be really this confused. Is great. Yes, <laughs> they'll go, what's this? And I'll go, I know you don't remember. Look, I'm, I'm loath to do this. I, I'm going to argue for a third take. <laughs> and I think, I think, Travis, we need a little, we need a dialogue pass. Yeah. We need a wash, at least, on the dialogue. And Lee, I feel like this framing is, is, is kind of neither here nor there. <laughs> If there's any notes you feel like you can give, it's not really telling this story visually. Actually, Watto, have you thought about directing any? <laughs> you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you Look know at how many type Toydarians have ever been nominated for Best Director? <laughs> <laughs> it is like a fucking steel ceiling that no one can break through. I mean, you're wearing a hat the same way my buddy Steve wears this it. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Okay, wait, let, let's get the third take and then leave. We're going to commiserate about this because I got fucking complaints. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam, I think the line should be, do you think Jess is a villain for hitting, right? So that oh. we make it clear. Or a hero yeah. for saving the, the that's nephew. Just, that's really that's good. That's really good. That's really good. Hey, everybody. Adam Savage. Oops, here we go. <laughs> fourth hey, take. Fourth Adam take. Adam Savage with my best friend, George Lucas, and Lee Ungrich, and Travis, and Jess. Jess. Wait, what was the dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> Is Jess a villain for hitting Nisa's head? Okay, answer that. No! Go. Is Jess a hero for saving her nephew from getting hit by a car? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Because every story. baby's head gets hit at some point, right? Yes. I mean, I may or may not have dropped a fidget spinner on my baby's head. Also. <laughs> and she's fine. Yeah. Also, by midnight tonight, if you'll send the clip to me, I'm going to add in a couple of stock shots of some fast cars. <laughs> 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 some clips from Tracy Chapman's fast car. <laughs> uh, uh, Lee, well, I, know, I know you started out as an editor. Do you think there's a clear cut point? <laughs> to do a, a kind of a clean lift of when Adam had to be reminded <laughs> what the line was mid-take? No, no, I don't think so. And that's why I think we need to do one last one. <laughs> and he said it not if I, I may be so Oscars. bold, if I may yes. be so bold, yes. I, I will handle the, the camera this Whoa. time. Whoa! Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. Cinematography. Oh if I take my jacket off, it's not going to fuck up continuity. <laughs> We're not using anything we shot before. Oh my god. Okay. Here we go. All right. And action.
Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, do you think Jess is a villain for damaging her niece's head by throwing her into a door frame? No! Okay, second question. Do you think she's a hero for saving the life of her nephew in traffic? It's on me. Okay. That okay. was a good rehearsal, okay. so now, now we're going to nail it. But, we need, but when, when Jess is up, we need everyone up. We need cheering. Yeah. We need arms moving. We need it all. OK, check the gate. OK, great. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Can we bring the house lights up at all? Yeah. yeah. Let's bring the house lights up. All the way up. Yeah. Adam, Adam, I do have some good news. You yeah. now have worked long enough on this that you will get credit. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, the serious question is, when Jess was throwing her niece up in the air and her head hit a door frame, does that make her a villain? No! But when she was at a celebratory day in Boston and saved her nephew from traffic, does that make her a hero? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And cut. <laughs> I, I, I think we got it. We don't need another take. Should we just get like 15 seconds of room call? Yeah. <laughs> I, I also will say just from years and years and years of programming, I did expect <laughs> you to say something about busting the myth of if it made her a villain or not. <laughs> also, uh, Patrick, just quickly, can you add this to Lee's IMDb yeah. as a direct <laughs> credit? <laughs> Absolutely, I can. I also think this has been a troubled enough production <laughs> that in addition to making the finished film, which we got in, eventually we got in one take, yeah. uh, we can also make... A beautiful take. A beautiful An entire take. film in one take. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think we can also probably put together a Hearts of Darkness style documentary <laughs> about how difficult it was to accomplish this very film. Uh, do you feel as though you may need to take your name off it because of how sexy it is? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, lo I'll look at the dailies and I'll let you know. Uh, I, I would like to quickly, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm becoming uh, rude to our guests. Your little housekeeping we have to do here. All right. Just kind of kill a couple birds with one stone on this stage. I have a few items. Uh, uh, once again, the guests, I'm sorry, this isn't for you. Uh, okay. There are items that, that traveled a long way. Wato obviously came here from uh, New York City. New and York City? Patrick Cotner demanded I curry items <laughs> over to him that were so large, they necessitated an entire second suitcase, which in the process of trying to pack them, broke. As you will see, this will never go back down again. I, I, so this is now a garbage suitcase that I'm throwing out in San Francisco. But I, Patrick, don't leave us with your trash. I was wondering when I was gonna get here this. Here are the world's largest packages for lost action figures. Uh, but that more than not that. quite mint grade. No, not no. anymore. Uh, more, more importantly, George, you of course asked me to uh, <coughs> swing by yeah. the ranch earlier today because you wanted to sample, you don't spend as much time there anymore, some of the wares of the land. It is off putting to see you walk around, Wada. Because <laughs> <laughs> I usually fly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got in there, George? Um, What'd you pick up here? We got some Skywalker <laughs> Pinot Noir, Skywalker Ooh. wine. What else you pick up here? Is that a uh, sparkling spark rosé? Sparkling, yeah. Ooh. Wow. Good eye. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's like you're testing a body. <laughs> it's still warm. <laughs> we got some olive oil. 
Oh, excited to test that one out. Yeah. We got some uh, peach preserves. Ooh, it's a party. Um, Any crackers? Some pepper sauce. I think so someone, we can all try one crackers. thing. I'm going to go get crackers downstairs. There are some crackers in the green room. Hang on. Yeah, go get some crackers. Patrick, can you also run to an ATM and get me some cash? <laughs> and some apple preserves as well. Oh. And uh, I, I like this as a beginning feature in future shows. We should always ask Patrick to go for crackers. Absolutely. You want me to open the wine? Yeah, if you want to open the wine. And the thing is, I, 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 it's kind of a little bit of a solemn occasion. This has been a rough year. I'm very happy to be here, but I'm still going through something, and I, I, I haven't talked about it here George. at the show. George. It's only February. Well, I mean, the past 12 oh, months. Okay, yes, the, yes. The, the, the not just the calendar year, because it's still an ongoing thing. Which um, George starts counting a year from the first traumatic thing that happens. <laughs> Yeah. Till 12 months later. Oh, like a teacher's calendar. Exactly. Occasionally, I'll start with the fourth month of the year, Travis, a good the job. fifth and sixth, yeah. then get yeah. to one, yeah. two, three later. Um, if we can go ahead and, and um, bring up uh, the, the slides. Uh, I uh, found out last year that I do not own my own driveway. <laughs> uh, it says it's currently in litigation. I probably shouldn't be talking about it here, but... It's the driveway to my, my home, and apparently through a, an error in the surveying, and, you, and uh, is it playing? Is it, uh, yeah, I think it should be playing, because there's many headlines. This is a big news story. Who heard about this? Who Anybody? heard about it from some, but who heard about it from somewhere other than this show? <laughs> well, you know that's not your home, of course, yeah. George. What? You know that's not your home. I course. own it. It has a, uh, the it's a home of sorts. San Anselmo? No, no, that driveway. they they no, have that the one's not. They got the yeah, wrong thing. The wrong That's photo. fine. I don't need a real picture of my real driveway. <laughs> no, but huh? But you see, my neighbors died, and their descendants uh, found out they own my driveway, and so I'm not. I'm suing the descendants of my dead neighbors. Um, I like this picture with it of like you know <laughs> he did Yoda. Yeah. Um. So we we want to serve up some of this. Who who wants the wine? Uh, um. Um. I'll have some, and I'll try to drink it from down here. Okay, Thank right. you so much. Great. Don't say that. <laughs> while, while we're pouring alcohol, uh, uh, Blake Hanrath, is one of the four mystery cans you gave me non-alcoholic seltzer? Yes. Yeah, that sucks. Zero out of ten. <laughs> I don't drink shit that makes me sober. Big miss, man. <laughs> this one's good, though. This one I like. And are these crackers to be passed out as well, yeah. Patrick? It's yeah, communion. It. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> What have you tricked us into, George? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Communion with jalapeno <laughs> potato chips. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Extreme Church. <laughs> That's a spicy god. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. It's not bad. Just it's a little good bit. Good wine, George. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Okay. Uh, we also, uh, if, um, I also got these Oreo space dunks. Monkey. No clunky. Anyone want an Oreo space yeah, dunk? Oreos and red wine, totally. What? Well, they're, they're Why special. match them space e? Hey. Well, I I was space dunk. Space dunk. But why? Huh. Um. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> don't ask why from late stage capitalism. Just consume. <laughs> it's filled with cosmic cream. Oh, cosmic cream. Cosmic yeah, that's fine. Oh, the cream got cosmic. <laughs> George. Oh, oh, oh. George, now if, it makes if sense. I may oh, be yeah. so bold, George, would you mind prepping me a, a oh, glass? Oh, no, oh, no. Uh, Colin Tompkins has to use this stage later. Oh! His natty shoes. <laughs> his spats will get so wet. Uh, George, would you mind? I would love to have a glass of sparkling wine with a pepper sauce floater. Is that possible? <laughs> Uh, Lee, I, can I nerd out for a second? Can I ask you a question I've always yes, wanted to please. hear? I don't feel I've ever heard you explain this. You are the background in live action, Ed. Yeah, a little bit. Right? Yeah. That was sort of your entry point to then getting hired onto Pixar. Yeah. Were they explicitly looking to get someone with a different perspective on editing to work on the film, or was it sort of by chance you ended up there? Oh, no. That's going to drip towards me. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, no. Hey, hey Patrick, I got, 
I got news for you. You know what else is going to drip towards you? Yeah. All of PFT's complaints. <laughs> <laughs> because we're telling him you poured everything. That's fine. <laughs> they, the, um, they don't pair well together. The you got champagne on my Oreo. The cosmic cream has pop rocks in it. Oh. Have you noticed? I ate it too fast. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's part of the, the space dunk. Yeah. I, I don't want to discourage people from doing comedy during this comedy show, but I have very important questions so I'm sad. asking. <laughs> no, I can tell why, because you stood up, turned your back to the audience. Yeah, yeah, no, this is leave. the most serious I've ever been in 10 years of doing this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, well, as we all know, George, you were like one of the original pioneers of nonlinear digital video editing. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! Credit where credit is due. <laughs> And when they were make when Pixar was making Toy Story, they um, wanted to. Ugh. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. This That's is a lot. That's make always sure the. You put an Oreo in there too. That's always the response. Oh, can you garnish the side with an Oreo? <laughs> this is a delicacy on your planet. <laughs> the yeah. response you always want from a guest on your show is ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a, a digital, non-linear Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Water, do you want any uh, Grogu George goldfish? Lucas, I'm trying to ask Lee Unkridge <laughs> about the editing of Toy Story. <laughs> yes, I would like some goldfish, please. <laughs> <laughs> Place them in my sparkling Will you throw me an Oreo? <laughs> <laughs> down in one, <laughs> down in one. Okay. I down in one if we have complete silence <laughs> and Lee gives his full answer, because I need it. <laughs> that's, that's a deal. You have a deal. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're making Toy Story. It was going to be edited on film, because that's how all animated movies were edited up to that point. Ugh. But, yes, but Pixar wanted to make the first completely digital movie, so they were editing on the Avid, nonlinear digital editing system, and there weren't many people in the world who knew it, and I knew it, and I was hired for what was supposed to be a four to six week job <laughs> to help get ready for a screening with Jeffrey Katzenberg before Jeffrey left to form DreamWorks, and somehow I ended up staying at Pixar for the next 25 years. <laughs> wow. Now, of course I know, but for Patrick's benefit, yeah. what is nonlinear? thing that you said. Well, everyone knows it's what you do on your iPhone now or whatever. It's like being able to take digital footage and edit it yourself and not have to do like a 20-year um, uh, apprenticeship under right. a, a film mean, editor the way things worked in the old days. The difference you is literally edit. taping physical footage together that had to be done. Like literally taping yes. film together. Literally right. keeping yeah. all of our friends in film school had bathrooms full of little right. bits of film hanging off the shower so they could cut them together. And, and you literally had to do it linearly because one scene or shot had to be taped after the one that came before. Yeah, basically. Versus not that your editing is a nightmare. The pieces and drag My first wife was an editor. I want to say... <laughs> George, <laughs> this isn't about you. This isn't about you. I want to say, first of all, Lee, Marcia, I Marcia, love that Marcia. answer. <laughs> I love that answer as much as I hated that beverage. The beverage you're going to drink in one now? Oh, I know. I crushed it, my man. Oh. Gone. Done. Wado, what else? Next question for next, Lee. Next you know, question. I know you got some. Oh, no, I do. No, yeah. because I do feel like... Uh, it's interesting that it was a byproduct of you having familiarity with the technology, because I do think it's one of the things that was so revolutionary about Toy Story, and part of that is like the added tools of CGI on a feature length film, is that I feel like it's the first animated film that to some degree has live action film language in it. Have you thought about like starting your own like spin off you like don't film fucking discussion? Know. Lee, kind of thing? You don't fucking know. It's true. I got, I mean, I got thoughts. <laughs> I think, what is your question? My question is, were you consciously trying to adapt your editing style to animation, or did you cut it as you would a live action film, even no, though the yeah, pipeline yeah, yeah. was I watched different. a lot of animation, because I'd never worked in animation before, so I watched cartoons, and I was like, this stuff is not cinematically interesting. Okay, and this is the answer. And I, I realized yep. that what they were doing was more akin to live action yep. than animation. And so that, I, I ended up being like this last puzzle piece that clicked into place. Since I didn't have any background in animation, but I was a filmmaker, 
uh, I was able to kind of bring that whole part of the widget, you know, move that into place. Um, and we, we made our films the way you would make a live action film. We thought of them as live action films, even though we were actually creating animation. Uh, thank you for confirming my thesis. <laughs> I finally can finish graduate school now. <laughs> I, that was always my read, thank you. George, do you have a question? That's a theme from Steamboat Willie. <laughs> Which is now in the public domain. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird that most more people don't whistle into the mics during podcasts. <laughs> Why? Oh, that's another thing we gotta bring up it's here. Don't okay, get them on. started on this. So, famously, this is not a podcast. Oh, what? I have to go. <laughs> no. Um, but we were once criticized online by someone who said this was the worst podcast ever made. Now, we're, we're not on any podcast apps. We're not a podcast. But this show has been promoted as a podcast show series. Did anyone come to this show thinking it was a podcast? Great. Good. So so that promotion didn't attract anyone who likes <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> and also, Watto, did George. you notice some of the graphics for the show? I did. There's two kind of bugbears we have inside the administration of the George Lucas talk show. How many glasses of wine have you had so far? <laughs> Your demeanor has changed, <laughs> I will say. <laughs> I just want to let the audience know, especially anyone who did not <laughs> witness our show last year at Sketchfest, George drinking is a thing that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> and last year was the first time in a long time. Uh, we got the interesting result. Uh, uh, two, there are two things that happen to us that we've tried to control the narrative on and it never works. One is we are not a podcast. We are a talk show that has just not yet gotten picked up <laughs> for broadcast. <laughs> the second thing is sometimes Outside forces seem to have an odd view of who is the central star of this show. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, what happened? Did you see the promos? They got little circles for the, all the shows. <laughs> oh and no. the circles, there's pictures of people. Oh, no. And, and the poster, we were included on a poster that said, come see your favorite podcast oh. at SF Sketchfest. Oh, no. We were one of a couple little circles on that poster. And, and the photo that we submit is a photo of Watto and me in the center and Patrick. Oh, no. And if you look at all the little circles, <laughs> they crop out Watto. <laughs> and they show a picture of me and Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> And let's make this clear. Patrick is dead center in the cropping. George is even clipping a little bit. He's barely making it into the circle. Now, this is not to body shame Patrick, mm -hmm. but if you were to ask a stranger on the street, rank the members, the permanent members of the George Lucas talk show in terms of visual uniqueness, <laughs> perhaps to attract an audience to a comedy show, Guy who wears hats <laughs> would rarely be the center frame. I will say. It's not I'll even unique tonight, Watto. You're wearing a hat. Because I'm trying to compete with you. <laughs> I didn't make this circle. So I stole your fucking hat backstage. <laughs> I didn't even make the goddamn poster. I will say, <laughs> if instead of a promotional image, someone was putting together a new edition of Webster's Dictionary, and they said, we need an image for podcasts, like, how about these two white guys talking? <laughs> <laughs> then I'd have no objection. I'd say, okay, fair point. Fair point. <laughs> and, and by the way, glass ceiling. Do you know how many Toydarians have ever won a Webby for best podcast? <laughs> Zero. Now, to be fair, that's the same number of McElroys who have that's ever won. true. Uh, <laughs> and also, to be fair, Watto, it's just commerce. You only have to pay for a Webby and they'll hand you one. That's also true. How many Webbies do you have? Six, six Webbies? Six, six Webbies? Oh, no. Six Webbies? Yeah, six or seven. Six and <laughs> let me ask you this. How did your life change when you got the sixth one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was missing a spring in my life. <laughs> the Webby Awards are big spring. Mm -hmm. Lee, Lee. <laughs> yeah. 
Lee, same question. How many Webbies you got? I have zero Webbies. Z zero Webbies? However, wait, how many Academy Awards do you have? I don't know, but I do have a Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Award. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. it. Okay, wait. Oh, yeah. Shut up. Forget Watto's stupid questions. When you look inside it, is it the blimp? Is it the kaleidoscope? Yeah, it's a little, you like, you look through the thing at the end and it's like a kaleidoscope, yeah. Oh my God, that's the coolest. Okay, <laughs> I, oh, I, I, want, I want that you, and a piece of the aggro crag. That's all yeah. I want. Did you, get, did you get slimed? Were you near slime? No, it's actually a really embarrassing story. Here we go. go. On. Oh. Here we go. So I was saving my nephew from getting hit by a car. <laughs> no, this is really cringy for me. It's a really, it's a really embarrassing. We, Andrew Stanton and I, were nominated for uh, Finding Nemo for Nickelodeon Woo! Kids' Choice Awards, and they had us, they had us show up on the the orange carpet and everything. We did like press on the orange carpet. We got inside and we were given our seats and we were like, why are we so far from the stage? We were like, way, 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 way in the nosebleeds, and. We got, it got to the point where they were giving the award and Finding Nemo won. And Andrew and I jumped up and were like, I guess we have to like run all the way to the front of the stage. And so we started bolting. And then all of a sudden there was some celebrity coming out on stage to accept the award. What? Like we were never intended to what? go out and actually accept the what? award. Wow. Was it celebrity like Ellen? It? I don't even remember. Albert Brooks. But we had this like really horrible. <laughs> <A kid. laughs> Alexander Gould. We had this really horrible cringe moment where we had to like turn around and like slink back to our seats. You should have kept running. <laughs> oh no. Basically you Isn't had the Zoolander like moment except you had one. What's that? You had the Zoolander moment, except you had actually oh, won. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> was oh. It, but in your memory, it was not the celebrity who had anything to do with the movie? No, it might have been like Ellen. It was probably Ellen. It was Ellen. Generous. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they didn't yeah. tell you. They didn't tell us. And and a serious question. I know And Travis we had our kids with us. This is the really oh, sad no. part. Oh, no. They what? I, Andrew and I had our daughters with us, and they were oh. so excited, and they jumped up with us, and we were all running to the stage. Oh, it's awful. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think I've ever told that story. Oh, no. It's just, it's too painful. Did, <laughs> did Ellen know, but she just forgot to tell you? No, no, no one knew anything. Sorry, was that, just was a just a, that was a Dory deep cut. Because Dory can't remember. Oh, it. A, a DDC. Nice. It's good when you have to explain them. A and DDC. who thinks just didn't get enough credit for that joke? Yeah, yeah. just, 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 just. It would have been great if after you got back to your seat and you sat down, and then you got slimed. <laughs> I felt like I kind yeah. of got like oh, God. slimed. Yes. Okay, wait, Lee. Additional, slimed. additional question. Do you not win? Blimps for Toy Story 3 or Coco? I think I was never asked back to the Nick Nickelodeon <laughs> Kids' Choice Awards after that. Wait, what did you do wrong in this scenario? I don't know. I'm oh. not, yeah. Yes, I did receive awards for those movies. But, Good. I, but you weren't at the ceremony. No, I but didn't. Th but no. they won in their respect. You can you. understand why I didn't go back to the <laughs> ceremony. You fool me <laughs> once. Does anybody here have a Teen Choice surfboard? That's a pretty good one. I want that. Wow. George, do you know that Teen Choice gets a surfboard? No, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, have you ever tried looking inside your Oscar to see if it's a kaleidoscope? <laughs> I could turn it into a kaleidoscope oh, for you. Oh, I'd love oh. that. Hey, what I really wish is that you could like peel the, the, the gold down and it would have like a luscious <laughs> chocolate scent. That would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's all just quickly check in. Uh, George Lucas, how are you doing? <laughs> It is, uh, oh, for those of you listening to the podcast at home, I, um, no. it's also become interesting. You're moving so far away from your table, George. Oh. Oh, I no. drink. Oh, oh, no. George. <laughs> I, I realized at a certain point that I had, I had had too many glasses of wine. Too many cups. <laughs> Jimmy Cobbs, I, I, need to dis I need to disengage a little. George, I think you're in a really good headspace right now. Do you want to rapid fire direct one question at each of our four <laughs> guests on stage? Um, first, first idea, best idea, whatever comes to mind. God. <laughs> it doesn't have to be in order, too. It can just be whatever you think yeah, of. Go first. wild. Yeah. Adam, you have a favorite movie of mine? 
<laughs> yeah, I was going to say Empire, but that's okay. <laughs> American uh, graffiti. Here, I got follow American so graffiti. Your 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 book, Every Tool is a Hammer. Is that true? <laughs> In every tool can be a hammer. That's the thought. So yes. Okay, we, so we not is, hammer but can be. Every tool can be a hammer. <laughs> you feel that wouldn't move enough paper? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, totally. I pitched every tool. Inside every tool Look is a hammer, cover. and they were like, that's too many words. Look at this cover. Every tool is a hammer, and this says, live is what you make it. It looks like you, the reader, are in trouble. <laughs> like, look at that. <laughs> it's it's, it's like, like the person you're talking to just said, I don't think every tool is a hammer. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> every this, tool this, is a hammer. This book, this book screams, I'm not angry, I'm disappointed. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it actually does scream that when you open it up. <laughs> they put one of those chips in. To be fair, I'm not angry, I'm disappointed is a key moment in every parent's life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lee. Yes? If you, do you ever think about making a movie with me? <laughs> with you in it? No. Because I would make what? a movie with you in it. What would no. that movie be? Oh, God. <laughs> elevator pitch. Second unit. Elevator pitch. You're in the elevator, and I'm, like, open to it. He can be himself, he can be playing a character, either no, one. No, see, you're the one who does, does improv here, George. So yeah. you need to pitch me the movie that you would like me to make oh. with you in it. Okay. I, I, Lee, I Turn like your challenge. I just want to establish George hates improv. It's why he doesn't like Empire <laughs> Strikes Back, because they changed his dialogue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there a movie? I would like to see a CG George. A I CG would. George? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> um... Is there is there a movie of yours that you wish I had been in? Uh, and what would the character be? And then we'll do that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Just a regular question to ask someone. Yeah, I think that's a good question. What's a movie of yours? Pick any movie of yours that you wish I'd be in, and then I'll tell you what character I'd be in it, mm. and then we'll do the scene. <laughs> Who wants these chips? <laughs> Follow-up question, who wants these chips? <laughs> Are you okay? I'm gonna be great. Um, <laughs> my question, my George, quest what, quick question, what time is your flight tomorrow morning? <laughs> no, what? What time is your flight tomorrow morning? The jet is running right now. <laughs> I go right in the plane. <laughs> Follow-up question, who wants these chips? <laughs> <laughs> All right, start. Oh, no. <laughs> Lee? Lee, let's name a movie that you don't yeah, know. No, I think that George could be a beloved member of the Toy Story gang. Okay. okay. What? Okay. Are, are we talking, like, let's be clear. Are we talking Sunnyside Daycare Crew? Are we talking original Andy's room No, we're crew? talking old school Andy's okay. toys. Yeah. Andy's okay. bedroom, yeah. Okay, here's my pitch. I am new in box. M MIB. <laughs> I'm in the Toy Story, and I'm a, a character who's mint in box, uh -huh. collectible. It's kind of a double beat for Stinky Pete the Prospector. We did that arc in TS2. You're exactly right. It's a great note. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tread on. I don't need. The last thing I need, Kelsey Grammer mad at me. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Baby, I hear the blues are calling. <laughs> to salads and scrambled eggs. Oh, oh mercy. <laughs> and maybe I seem a bit confused. But Tell baby, me. I got you pegged. <laughs> Everybody! But, but, but I, I don't know what to do with those hot salad and scrambled eggs. They're yeah, calling call again. again. They're calling again. Bum. 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 Okay. Bum. Good night! <laughs> Paramount Plus, season two, coming soon. <laughs> I got, I got Let the Let me ask you now. this. Did everybody watch the first season of Frasier? <laughs> the new Frasier on Paramount Plus? Who watched the first season of New Frasier on Paramount Plus? Um, George. Stand up if you watch the new season of Frasier <laughs> on Paramount George, Plus. George, 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 over George, here. George, 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 George I'd over like, here. I'd like credit that I have a small part in episode six. I Whoa! Yeah. Small part. Episode six. Thank you. Six, 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 six. Thank you so much. Episode six, the return of the Jedi of Frasier 2.0. 
Jess, what is your character's name? Uh, Wait, which Kiki. episode is it, Jess? Um, it's it's an episode where, uh-oh, Frasier and his son have been set up on both on oh, a blind date. Both on a blind date. And June Day and Rafe. And they don't know. And they don't know who. They don't know which one is, uh, uh, for th if it's for Frasier or, or for, for his, his son. son. Yeah, and the B story is that the bartender is doing a bad murder mystery, and I wrote the murder mystery. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I just, r I come out and say, like, uh, it was the butler or something. Boilers! Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. If people here haven't watched Fraser 2.0 on Paramount Plus, shame on you. <laughs> you shouldn't have come to the show. Filled with spoilers. George. My, my pitch now is that George voices a Funko Pop of Fraser Crane in the Toy Story <laughs> universe. George, Every 10 year old boy's favorite character. George, you got two more Razor questions. Crane. You got two more questions to knock out. It's Travis time. Yeah, hold on. But first, I want to say this because you make a great point. There have been four Toy Story movies, and to the best of my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, no Fungo Pops, right? Any know. Fungo Pops? Are there? Yeah, I think Were there Fungo Pops? No, no, in the movies. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Everyone was making a noise like I was wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think anyone was making a noise, George. <laughs> I heard everybody making a noise okay. fast. <laughs> Fungo like Pops. You made your name have one syllable. <laughs> Fungo Pops are a big thing in the world of toys. You go into some stores and you wonder what is this store? Cause it's just Fungo Pops. Is there any way we can get a tight spot just on George now for his tie five? A soliloquy spot. You go into some stores. No, you do the stand up, George. I'll make the music. Do you ever notice you go in a store now and it's just Fungo Pops? And you wonder what is the store? You ask for this is a Fungo store, they say no, it's just a regular store. We got so many, most of what you have is Fungo Pops. But it's not a Fungo Pop store. You need to change the name of your store. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Toy Story 5 has got to be about these Fungo Pops. <laughs> Lee? You are, Lee, are you listening? <laughs> it's not a question. That's an order. <laughs> All right. You're the boss, George. I'm not, I'm retired. <laughs> I won't be hurt if it's not, but <laughs> Travis. Yes, George? How many Fungo Pops do you own? <laughs> also, follow-up question. You want some M&Ms? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to quickly... <laughs> I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I the, was timing, like to <laughs> the timing was impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like and to quickly <laughs> explain to the audience here at the Great Star Theater that canonically, George Lucas, the man who is on stage with us tonight, this is perhaps the fifth time he has ever had alcohol in his entire life. Four. 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 Okay. Damn them. Well, they're, they're actually Funko Pop, custom Funko Pop, someone made of our characters from the Adventure Zone. So it's, mm. uh, there's a Merle Magnus Taco and Griffin as uh, the DM. Wow. Do you keep them in the box? I do, actually, yes. Why? <laughs> so my kids don't play with them. <laughs> what do your kids play with? Other toys? Name them. <laughs> um. Steve. <laughs> My nope. best friend? <laughs> yeah. I hired Steven Spielberg to come and play with my kids <laughs> once a week. <laughs> you ever seen the movie The Toy with Richard Pryor? I did that with Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> what was the actual per day cost? Not that much. <laughs> oh, we got very little time left. <laughs> Jess. Yes, George. George, Honestly, remember, George, just take a moment and yeah. remember the question you're about to pose is to an American hero. <laughs> Thank you. Just yes, weigh yes, the responsibility. Yes. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. 
you, of the you. question you're about to ask. Thank you, thank you, Otto. Thank welcome. you, audience. Jess. Yes, George. How many days do you work on on Fraser episode <laughs> six two point oh? Um, well, it was my first and only time doing a multicam, and you get to you know go for rehearsals. Um, so uh, two, I believe, but I got paid for the week. But we were shot out. I was not the part in front of a live audience. I was part of the pre-shoot day. Whoa. Pre-shoot or reshoot? Pre-shoot. And then you know what? It worked out perfectly because you know what I did that Friday, George. I don't know what you did the that Friday. That the, what? That the night that was tape night, where I would have been, I would have been part of the tape night. Tell me you saved a Instead, child's life. Instead, I flew to Boston to see Desmond play Jack Kelly in Newsies. Whoa! Santa. I swear you won't forget me. If I found you, would you let me come and stay? I ain't getting any younger. younger. And before oh, my I dying day, I want but space. Not just but to air. Let them laugh in my face. The I don't care. <laughs> Save we gotta a place. sell some newspapers. <laughs> The greatest duet in musical history, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Jess, you think Travis wants any m ms <laughs> This feels so much like doing a podcast with my brothers. Are you sure this isn't a podcast? <laughs> Jess, what was the vibe like on the set of Frasier 2.0? Did people feel like we're get beginning a long run, or did it feel like we'll see what happens? Um, I th There was a lot of whispered talks about the thing is, is Kelsey really gets Frasier. <laughs> <laughs> I should fucking hope so. <laughs> They'd be like, it's amazing. It's Everybody. Amazing. You'll pick up a glass and he'll go, that's not Frasier. Not the character, the tone of the show. That cross is taking too short. That's not Frasier. The cross needs to take twice as long. That's Frasier. Wow. He's like, there's not enough doors in this scene. We need two more door openings. That's Frasier. <laughs> Adam, get your phone out. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. Adam, you have your phone out? I'm not even going to look. I want the audience to say, first we go one, two, three. You say, that's Frasier. Then I go one, two, three. Then you say, that's not Frasier, okay? <laughs> and we will use this through the duration of the rest of the run of the George Lucas talk <laughs> show. Okay? Uh, Adam, you let me know when you're ready. Rolling. We're rolling? All Sound. Sound. Right. I'm gonna say one, two. I'm not gonna voice the three to leave a little bit of room for edit. That's good, right, Lee? Yeah, yeah. All right? <laughs> and then you say, that's Frazier, then I'll do one, two, and then I'll leave a space, and you do, that's not Frazier, okay? We're only gonna do this once. Maybe. Maybe. One, two. That's you gotta leave a beat for the three. <laughs> All right? One, two. That's one, two. Perfect. Cut. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Do you think he uses that when they're like, okay, so um, we're, we're not going to be able to give you a break? He's like, that's not Frazier. <laughs> Frazier would give me a break. Frazier would give me a, Frazier would give me two 20s within this yeah. hour. Oh, okay. Do you Wait. think he uses that in divorce settlements <laughs> where they're like, the Malibu home goes to your ex, and he's like, that's not Frazier. <laughs> Frazier would keep the Malibu property. Uh, you're right. But you had a good time working on it? I did. I did have a good time, yeah. Do you think your character will come back in season two, God willing? So uh, I was almost going to come back in episode 10 because a friend of mine is the showrunner of this season. He's like, I tried to get you back because you're the only canonical person that character knows outside of the world. <laughs> Wait, was this for the Christmas episode? Yeah, they were like, we just want to like bring you back <laughs> in. And I was on rolled, and then uh, and he was like, I'm sorry, I couldn't swing it. And then I was like, it's okay, I just got COVID, so I wouldn't be able to do it. You had COVID? I, I di did. In did Frazier have COVID? <laughs> That's not Frazier. Did? <laughs> One, two. That's, That's not, not Frazier. Oh, this should be its own show. <laughs> let me ask this, let me ask this. Okay, so how many people here watch Frazier 2.0 <laughs> on Paramount Plus? Stand up if you did. Stand up if you did. And leave. <laughs> yeah. One? Just you? Just you? What did you think about it? Yeah? <laughs> How did you feel about the original Frasier? You didn't watch it? <laughs> you must have been so confused. You came in cold? You came in cold? <laughs> Why'd you watch it? Why'd you watch it? 
What made you watch it? Everyone else be quiet. <laughs> Why'd you watch it? You came in cold, you never seen Cheers, you never seen Frasier, right? So you watch Frasier 2.0, what made you watch it? You have Paramount Plus? That's it? That's all it took? That's why most people watch the shows on Paramount Plus. Yeah. Why is it so wet? Why is it so why is it so wet on this part of the stage? Patrick, Patrick. went pee pee. Patrick went pee pee. <laughs> that that reminds me of the time that I went to see Born Legacy in theaters without seeing the first three, because I thought it was a clean entry point. <laughs> New guy. Very much about chems. All right, we have three minutes left You're in the around. show. Okay. Lightning round. What do you think? Having <laughs> great. <laughs> of Frazier? I'm a big fan of lightning. Lightning? Yeah. You like lightning as well, a natural. Well, you said it's a lightning round. What do you, you think? Like I like lightning. You like a natural phenomenon of lightning. What I do you do. like about it? I, I like the transfer of energy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lee. Lee, lightning round, what do you think? It doesn't have to be about lightning, but it can be. I think that I want him always laying yeah. in front of me anytime I do any kind of That's stage. That's fine. Right? Fly me out and can I'll I, be there. Can I tell you this, Lee? Patrick would do that, and Thank he you. is available. Very, extremely available. I am psyched that I flew to San Francisco for this. <laughs> Travis, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Jess, what do you think? Uh, definitely counting the seconds to see when the thunder comes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's a good yeah. tie it together. Who in the front row has a record player and doesn't own this record? You? Come on over and take this record. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You almost recreated the fr the famous moment when Kelsey Grammer <laughs> fell off the stage. <laughs> oh dear Lord! <laughs> so close, but no! I'm not gonna give you that, San Francisco. Now, hold on a second. Oh my God! I'm gonna turn on Butter Bear. What? I'm sorry. I just want to make it clear to the audience: the thing that George tripped over is the clock that tells us when to end the show. <laughs> Great Star Theater staff is waiting in the wings. <laughs> to carry <laughs> George off. All right. For those, for those of you who are, uh, thank you to our guests. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, that's that, George. Yeah, George, George. George. Before yeah. this quick lightning, true lightning round, anything to plug, thank you all for being here. Adam Savage. Oh, God, go watch me build stuff on tested.com. I'm on YouTube now. Yeah. Leon Critch. My Tashin book on the yeah. making of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Yeah. By the end of the year, there'll be an affordable edition. Yeah! Oh, now, <laughs> it's a great book. I it's have a, a copy of the expensive one. It's sold out now. You can't get the expensive one. But for people who aren't billionaires, a new version <laughs> coming soon? Yes. That's exciting. That's great. Tashin <laughs> sale right now. A lot of damaged Tashin books. <laughs> if you like, if you, let me tell you something. Oh, no. Oh, George, come if on. If you like a Toshin book. George, we're winding down. I know. If you like a Toshin book, but you don't mind a little bit of superficial damage, <laughs> go to the Toshin website right now. <laughs> They're running a sale on slightly damaged copies. It's going to knock your socks off. <laughs> okay. Travis. Lee, Lee, Travis. This is, this is not a joke. I have a copy of the full giant version of your tension Thank book. Thank you, Otto. I got it because uh, a dear friend, John Hodgman, gifted me his copy because he said he no longer had enough room in his brown stove. <laughs> <laughs> is this true? Yes, so now I have it in a much smaller space. Are you just the caretaker or did he actually give it to you? He was like, I think you would appreciate it. it Feels like it'd be right to I be in your I think I have to give John and a call. Make it clear. He said, he said, I, don't I know think how I feel Watto. about this. I think Watto is the person. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to clear up the timelines here. Oh, no. Real quick, a fun hashtag game <laughs> after midnight. Uh, tweet at John Hodgman. I have a really big book. Do you have room in your brown stuff for it? <laughs> Travis McElroy. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm doing a show here at the Great Star uh, called the Traventure Zone. Uh, thank you. Where we're going to be playing some Dungeons and or Dragons uh, with Danny Fernandez, Erica Ishii, Eugene Cordero, uh, Connor Ratliff, Griffin Newman, and Aaron Keefe. Uh, 7 p.m. tomorrow night. It's going to be dumb and fun. I don't recognize two of those names. Just yeah. McKenna. 
Um, if you want to sprint over after that uh, show at 8 o'clock at the chapel, maybe you could come late. Um, uh, um, you come see an, an em improvised emo show, Every Place I Cry. We go. make up emo songs. Can I say something? Yeah. Uh, after the show, out in the lobby, we're going to be, the, the, the three of us from the show are going to be signing posters. You can come say hi, buy a poster, take a picture, whatever you'd like. Uh, come say hi. It'll be fun. Thank you for coming. <laughs> All right. Um, if you know, you know, this is Butterbear, and uh, we're just going to see what, but we're going to give the last word to Butterbear. And which George, is just very quickly, what is Butterbear from, and what's the origin of that intellectual property? Okay, Butterbear is from, uh, in the mid-1980s, Michael Eisner was in charge of Disney, and he decided there should be some new original Disney cartoon characters, and Butterbear was part of the Wuzzles. And this is an AM radio that was sold as merchandise, because what child in the 80s didn't love listening to AM radio? <laughs> So let's hear what Butterbear has to say. <laughs> Find a good one. So why did the Ball of Tonkin show start late? <laughs> Normal reason. George, you, you gotta end the show, buddy. Oh my god. Good to know, thank you. We should go, George. <laughs> and, and may the force be with you, always. Yeah.